Director Gus Van Sant is here over the years. He has crafted both unusual and mainstream films. Here's a look at some of his work. Do you have any idea what this little bottle is worth? No bottle, what's it worth? This here little bottle has got 840 some odd 16s and a $10 16th that comes to around $8,400 of the best goddamn pharmaceutical dope money can buy. What if I this here little bottle ought to last the three of us a week. I was planning a change. There was a time when I had the need to learn from you, my former and psychedelic teacher. And although I love you more dearly than my dead father, I have to turn away. Now that I have and until I change back, don't come near me. Excitement of meeting you must have upset his chemical balance or something because, my dear, you are so stunning. Don't be afraid of a sissy. Come on. Oh, I've never ridden in a cab before. The whole idea of paying for a ride just makes my thumbs hurt. That is so interesting, but don't, don't worry, dear. It's not nearly as bad as it sounds. Did you take a nice seat in the back? I believe that Mr. Gorbachev you know, the man who ran Russia for so long? Mm -hmm. I believe that he would still be in power today if he'd done what so many people suggested and had that big purple thing taken off his forehead. <laughs> I firmly believe that. Someday I hope to interview him and we would discuss that along with other more pertinent international things. I hate to think about it. She needs me. It's not as if she were a maniac or a raving thing. She just... I was a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. <laughs> get out of the way! Get out of the way! Baby. I can't believe you had tickets in that f***ing game! Yeah. Did you rush the field? Uh, no, I didn't rush the f***ing field. I wasn't there. What? No, I was in a bar having a drink with my future wife. You missed Pudge Fist's home run? Oh, yeah. To have a f***ing drink with some lady you never met? Yeah, but you should have seen her. She was a stunner. I don't care if Oh, no, no, she lit up the room. I don't Ooh. care if Helena Troy walks oh, into the Helena room. That's Troy. game six. Oh, oh my. This year's win at a big prize at Cannes was his latest film, Elephant. Elvis Mitchell of the New York Times calls it unusual and remarkable. Here is the trailer for Elephant. Mom's going to kill you. What? What are you doing? Dad, I'm driving. Get out of the car, Dad. Joining me now is Gus Van Sant, also here, the executive producer of this film, Diane Keaton. Welcome. It's great Thank to have you. both of Thanks. you here. Thank um, where did this start? Okay. Okay. You go, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> it started as a response, I think, to all the uh, the news about Columbine being uh, it being the sort of largest um, school shooting. I, I, before then, there had been other instances, but Columbine sort of um, yeah. devastated everyone, and the press was covering it so widely that I thought that there was a place for a dramatic investigation. Into, to do what? To look into to the same 
-hmm. Probably, the, uh, I think, you know, entertainment was sort of like not the thought, and I'm not sure that any of my films are like designed yeah. as an entertainment. They're designed to uh, be curiosities, you know, and they're always like investigating something that you're sort of not supposed to be investigating. Uh, dramatically, but um, I thought that drama could do something that maybe the journalists couldn't uh, necessarily get at. You know, it, it, it could get someplace that that the journalists wanted to, but it was difficult for them to get at. I mean, I, I think also it acts as a um, uh, a song about such an event, an opera of, of sorts. It Visual. is also it is also just an it it, it seems to me. It is a film about what's going on in high schools throughout America. It's trying to come to grips with what are the passions and the emotions and the conflicts and the troubles of so many people who don't go to the length of Columbine or, or to murder. I personally love the film for a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons that I really love it is because it isn't hammering me on the head with a message. Right. And I'm so sick of it. And I'm so sick of these quick paced sort of like <laughs> and telling you all the time what you're supposed to think. This, this movie gave me an opportunity as an audience member to just sit there and listen. And it's so important to listen. And I think it's an, an, you know, an underprivileged art. I, I think we don't do it enough. And I think that this forces you to ask your own questions, to take a look at what you think, as opposed to what somebody else is telling you. So what you to want think. this movie to make people think? Totally. I think it does. I think, I think it, it does just, I mean, I think it's unavoidable when you're watching it. And I also think it's something that everybody should see, should be forced to see. I really do, because it's really, it's such an alternative to everything else. And I love everything else just as well in terms of entertainment, but this is really not exactly what I would call an entertainment. Okay, but I always say that entertainment other than entertainment, because it's always, I mean, people, you don't want to, you don't want, if you want people to think, you want lots of people to think. You don't want nobody to be at the theater. So no, they can think. I totally agree. That's so why there has to be a component of something that's well, compelling that people want to come no see. No question about it, Charlie. That's no question I mean. about it. And when, you, but when you're looking at this, like right now, looking at the trailer, which is the first time I've seen the trailer, right. I'm also struck by how dazzlingly beautiful it is. Mm. It's like a, it's lyric. It's so gorgeous. And Harris Savides, who is just like, it, oh, he's talk your cinematographer. About, he's the cinematographer. He is great. I think okay. it's gorgeous. How did you get involved? I mean, That's what's a your good role question. Here? Let's yeah. figure that out. Oh, yeah, now. let's go there. Mm. You're the hookup. You're the I'm money the person. One. I'm Ooh. the man. <laughs> she's, the she's the banker. She wears the pants. Well, <laughs> we made the calls. Let's put it oh, that did you way. Really? Mm -hmm. Say hello. This is Diane Keenan. I, I, I need some money because I'm gonna make a great movie. I did. I made the calls. I got calls. Gus Van Sant. It's gonna be. Uh, listen, let me tell you something. I didn't quite have Gus Van Sant. That was my problem. For four and a half years, I was chasing Gus Van Sant. Four and a half years. Yeah, this took a long time to make. So what was your problem? You tell us why you're. So hard to well, get. Why are you no, the initiation, the initiation of the project was, um, you know, we we went. To, you brought me into into HBO. And, I did. And the project was project was initiated on a script level, and then you have to go, always go to level the next level, level two, which is making the movie, yeah. and that's always a jump. Um, I think in our case it was a jump because I was going through. Um, a change. A change cinematically. I was trying to think of ways to um, handle um, my filmmaking so that it did something different than than some of the earlier films had done, it were, stylistically. And so I was looking at this subject and looking at the script that we had by J.T. Leroy. Yeah, but okay, what the stylistic thing you had early on was that the kind of a cinema verite kind of real gritty feeling about it. Yeah, but along with that, I think the style was basically rooted in you know an American cinematic style where you um, you're often creating the uh, the film in the cutting in the cutting room. You're you're covering it, covering a scene. Uh, and you're allowed to take lines out and put lines in later in the cutting room. Um, I was trying to get out of that habit and, and do things right on the set so that there was no turning back. And Which yet, if you noticed, it also did not have the feel at all of, a, of an improvised movie. Yeah. It was very it like graceful it, it and it was silent and yet sometimes when they did speak it was so appreciated because it was like this little insight into kind of the behavior of kids at school and what their lives are like. and and where the depth of the problem is. You had the property, the idea. I, I had the, the idea with Bill Robinson, my right. partner. 
Yes. Okay. We did. And you, without embarrassing him, why? But let me you? just tell you, it was it was a broad based idea that I think everybody had. It was sort of like one of those things that it's a no brainer. Oh, do you I know? See. There was a whole you bunch of filmmakers I mean? who yeah. wanted to do Everybody's something sitting about around what's in going on in high school. Yeah, exactly, especially at that particular time. And so then um, my agent, uh, you know, John Burnham, who is also Gus's agent at oh, the time, well, put us together, go. and there you have it in yeah. a nutshell. I mean, because all my life, you know, I've wanted to work with Gus Van Zandt. Are you kidding? Uh, and so it was why? just this. Why? Why? Well, let's just figure that out. No, no. I mean, but what, no. because he had a certain sensibility or an because aesthetic I think he's that you absolutely, liked. Absolutely. I mean, I yeah. There's no question about that. That he's a great artist, absolutely hands down, right. and that it would be an honor to work with him, and also an opportunity to learn something. And also, if you're an actor, which in this case I wasn't, give me a break. I mean, they're well, few I'll give and you far between. I'll give you a break, but you've been wanting to direct too. <laughs> sure. I look. I'm happy to be part of this. Whole community in every possible way. So that's a fair appraisal of where you are in your head. That's you would, right. you, you just want to be a part of the process. If it's, I do. if it's executive producing, it's okay with you. If it's directing, it's okay with you. If it's acting, it's okay with you. Yeah. It depends on whether what it, it is, and if, if it's something that I feel that I have any. You know, look. In this case, it was just really to support Gus. It's to get him. It was to get him. Yeah. And, and it was it to support him. It took four years him. to get him. It took a long time to get him. All right. Roll tape. Here it is. Here's a scene from the film. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm uh, doing pretty good. Uh, <laughs> how do you think? <laughs> that good, huh? You had a casting call, and you had like 3,000 high school kids show up? Uh, 1,500. 1,500. High school kids Give showed up in Portland, Oregon. And yeah, we basically did our best to just take their pictures because we had like two cameras and uh, there were a lot of kids and we, we took their pictures and talked to some of them and then we called the ones that we liked back. Looking for what? Look? A look? We were looking for um, a high school cast because at the time we decided we were going to throw the script out the window and... Uh, <laughs> Her script? You which we did. The window. Um, yeah, <laughs> and we threw it out and... Um, the first step I thought was like, wonder if we have actors in Portland that can actually do it. Um, and looked in real high school, yeah. at real high schools with real high school kids, and most of them came to this big casting call. And um, you know, they were great. They were amazing. Um, had amazing abilities. And we we gave them improv tests and just to see if they could hold up in front of a camera. It was one out of ten were really like fantastic. Yeah. It's now the style is almost. I mean, it's like the camera's almost a kind of reality thing where you, the camera's just following him as he's walking. And, and what's that about? I mean, um, was there well, some deliberate style here that you thought was yeah, appropriate the, for this? I mean, that was part of the style that I was talking about earlier, where I was trying to get away from uh, some of the conventions that we have in cinema, like. The following camera, I think, is a way to connect um, where he is coming from and where he's going to. I mean, generally, we we cut from the football field, which is where Nathan's coming from, and we cut to the office, which is where he's going to, and we don't ever see how he got there. Right. Even though in our lives, none of us really goes anywhere without actually journeying there. That's right. So you want to show the journey. We wanted to show the journey as a way to include, our, you know his real life in what we were watching. Since all of us, you know, things happen to us when we go from the Charlie Rose show to our next dinner. engagement, yeah. our dinner. Right. And things happen along the way, and so we wanted to have things happen along I his see. way right. as well. And, and is that that's scripted or improv uh, improvisational or both? It was, uh, I mean, the original run-throughs were improv, and then we, you know, sort of like decided what we liked, and then we shot those things, and we kind of cemented it a little bit. Now, there are executive producers, and there are executive producers. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you doing all this time? You mean and when yeah, Gus, well, yeah, Gus yeah, was right. making the movie? Yes, ma'am. I was shooting a television movie Oh, I in see. Winnipeg. So you just you executive produced this, got Here's it going. Here's what I did. I got it going, yeah. and then I said, Gus? I mean, I think that's the smart thing to do. Yeah. I, I wish I had been around, though. I, I, I actually do wish that I had been, because I think that it would have been fascinating to watch how they made this movie. Because it is really, 
you know, it's a, it's a very definite diversion from the usual. And also, it's very different from any other improv movie that I've ever seen. Because mainly, you get a bunch of actors in a room, and let me tell you, you know, you can't shut them up. I mean, the difference between this and a Cassavetes movie, you know, yeah. is, is astonishing. I mean, those are great. Don't right. get me wrong. But this is very, very much more structured. And like, like Gus said, it's, it's more like music. Would you like to be a studio executive like Sherry mm -hmm. Lansing or oh, Stacey yeah, Snyder? Oh, yeah, I would love it. <laughs> would you really? Of course I would. Would you really? You're serious, aren't you? I'm totally serious. You would like that? I would love it. Because you would like to, you love movies so much and the idea of having yeah. some power I where you I would like to be able to say yes and no to movies and, and pick which director I, I trust and have faith in and have something to do with what the message is. And I mean, of course I would fail. Because I'm I, well, because I'm I'm sure that I would not be picking the movies that would make the money, and because you know you have to make money. And it's I'm harder sure than that it looks too. It's right? hard, and those yeah, it really is. It's very difficult because I know them slightly, you know, most uh, of the gals, and yeah. and I respect them enormously, and it's it's uh, it's very stressful. That part of it I wouldn't like, but I would love the idea of you know being able to choose. <laughs> I or for a week, like a guest. Like a guest, executive. like a guest editor at Vogue, exactly. That's it. That's what I would love to do. You could be do. a guest executive. Yeah, I would love you that. call up Sherry and say, sure. I'm coming. Don't come and work for the next yeah. month. I'm coming in for you. That's Just right. Just stay at home and play with Billy. That's right, exactly. <laughs> and play with Billy, exactly. yeah, exactly. <laughs> executive producers are guest executives because they, yeah. the, um, you know, the head of the studio is giving you the trust and letting you have your project. And and the whole thing was about faith and Gus. I mean, Colin yeah. Calendar, right. who's the president HBO. at HBO, yeah, of the motion picture He's department a great there. Person. <laughs> it's obvious, right? Yeah. I, I mean, he really, he really knew what he was doing in He's this. He case. also, would say, I mean, risky, risky. I don't have anything to do with them, but I mean, I know <laughs> them. But th these guys are really interesting in terms of. Of, of the HBO films aspect of it, I and mean, forget the Sopranos and all that well, stuff. Well, it was his idea, actually. It was it was his idea to put uh, the movie immediately into the Cannes Film yeah. Festival. That was his idea. That's smart. He, has, he had another movie that just came through here too, which I've forgotten about. Oh, really? That he that came under the same. You know oh, what really? Was? I can't um, there were a lot of them oh, last really? year. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he that was, they released his films yeah. first and um, sent to Cannes. American Splendor, probably. That's exactly American what it was. Splendor. American Splendor, very good. good. A, a wonderful movie. Did you love that movie? They were also a Cannes. Oh. Yeah, that was a great movie. I thought it was wonderful. Roll tape. This is another scene. This is where Eli takes a picture of John. Watch it. His camera's in his hand. Hey, Eli. Hey, what's up, John? How's it going? Pretty good. What are you doing? Just taking pictures. Uh -huh. Can I take a picture of you? Yeah, sure. Uh, Here is one. Here. 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 Nice. All right, hey, I'll see you later. Yeah. Hey, you going to the concert tonight? No, I can't. My parents are being bitches this week. Oh, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. You know, what do you want them to come out of this film thinking about high school? In my opinion, what I think they will do is ask themselves questions. What's going on? About what is going on. And also, I think, listen. The, the key thing for me about this movie is that it begs you to listen. In to the listen silence, to? To listen to the silence, because there's nothing there. Like, when you're listening to these kids talk, there, there is no talk of violence. There's no like message about the pain. There's, and yet it's all there. It's the elephant in the room. Right, and this yeah, is a very idea, apt right. name for this title for this movie. It's everything we avoid in ourselves. We all have this dark, you know, quality in all of us. There's, there's this violence in all of us in some place. And the, and the more that you're able to talk about it, I just think it, it begs discussion. And that's what this movie does, is it, it allows us to ask these questions that usually we just, when we go, we just sit to these movies and we let them tell us. Now it's our turn to think, to think, to listen, to ponder, to sit with it for a while. That's what I think. Uh, the, I assume the, also the title has to do with the sort of the proverb about, you know, the, the elephant. Uh, how you see the elephant depends on what part of them you touch. Right, the, the mm. unseen, like what exactly mm. <clears throat> is um, the cause of violence. Um, mm. There are so many different ways to look at it and so many, and, and the proverb of the blind men touching the elephant, one thinks it's a wall, one thinks it's a tree, it has the leg, mm. one thinks it's a snake because it has to hold of the tail. Yeah, right. <laughs> in, in, in putting it together, you ended up with a whole, totally new script, which was different how than the one you've been given. Um, well, this, more improvisational the script, and sort of the yeah. The original script had a lot of dialogue. Um, there was first we we assembled a cast of characters, which you know was my 
fantasy of mm-hmm. of uh, what a high school cast would look like. Um, meaning there was one guy who was going to be the jock, one guy who was the photographer, one guy who was um, the blonde-haired kid, one one guy who was the uh, the girl who didn't want to. Um, Mm. Wear short pants in gym class, which was actually a JT Leroy. Uh, that was based on me. <laughs> you didn't want to wear short pants in, in Look gym. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, you're all covered up. And uh, right. <laughs> we had one of one character, sort of like for each, uh, like identifiable high school characters. And then I, I went and uh, over a couple of weeks wrote an outline yeah. of of how these characters sort of play into like a high school, what they're doing. Uh, before um, this onslaught, before two of the other characters come with guns to uh, wreak havoc in their high school. Um, so it was basically just an outline. It did relate in the sense to the earlier script in the sense that it had sort of a myriad of different characters. So I come to you and I say, okay, you've made this movie you've, and, and you've explored these ideas. Uh, what, do you, what do you know now you didn't know when you started this exploration of these questions? Um, well, the things that I learn are usually coming out of um, either things people respond to when they see the movie or uh, new thoughts that I have as I'm watching the movie because the movie is somewhat acting as a uh, like thinking machine or a, almost a, a, a kaleidoscope or a Rorschach where you're seeing something and you other things come out of it within the picture. Yeah. I, I really did learn that I have to stop talking. And I have to listen. I have to really make a bigger effort in the listen. listening department. Yeah, really, in everyday you know, life, because I can't help but open my mouth, obviously, as you can tell. Well, congratulations. Thank you. For, I'm glad you found him and got him after four I'm years so to make this thrilled. movie. I am. Uh, I'm, I'm proud. glad that I found you. Yeah. Thank you, Gus. But thank both of you. for Thank you. It was thank you. really thank lovely. You. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.